The CLS-1 of Capristo is an electronic unit for processing lambda values and sending them to the ECU. The microcontroller measures and regulates those currents, which provide information about the exhaust gas values of the catalytic converter. The CLS-1 is used in racing situations where catalytic converters with increased exhaust gas values are driven. The ECU combined with the CLS-1 will always receive lambda values, which would correspond to those of a regular catalytic converter. This way the CLS-1 prevents unwanted reactions of the ECU. For setup and adjustments, the CLS Control Studio was developed a software with Bluetooth technology, which enables you to graphically display and alter all relevant values of up to four Lambda sensors. Through the Bluetooth technology, the measured values of the CLS-1 are sent wirelessly to the computer with the CLS Control Studio and displayed there. New settings are uploaded to the CLS-1 with the same connection. With this, you are in no way bound by location. The use of peer-to-peer -peer remote software, which is available free of charge on the Internet, makes it possible to make remote adjustments from any place with Internet access. Due to the fact that the CLS-1 and CLS Control Studio work as a unit, you must have a PC with installed software and Bluetooth interface before exchanging the exhaust system. Therefore, the whole implementation is done as follows. 1. Install the CLS-1 into the car. 2. Switch on the CLS-1, for example, by ignition. 3. Add the new Bluetooth device to the PC. 4. Install software. 5. Connect software to CLS-1. 6. Switch CLS-1 by software into bridged mode. 7. Start recording. 8. Do the test drive with the old exhaust system. 9. Save the recording. 10. Read out and check the recording from the CLS-1. 11. Exchange the exhaust system. 12. Send the new values to CLS-1. Prior to installing the CLS-1 into the car, the sockets of the Lambda sensor leading to the ECU need to be uncovered. For that, some side covers may need to be removed. The CLS-1 comes with connectors that fit onto your car, thus the whole installation is reduced to two main steps. 1. Mounting the CLS-1 inside the car. 2. Plugging the CLS-1 into the cables of the Lambda sensor leading to the ECU. In our example, the system is being installed into a Ferrari 458, which has Lambda sensors and ECUs on both sides. In order to connect the system, we remove the side covers under which the sockets for the Lambda sensors are located. These sockets are opened and the cables of the CLS-1 are plugged in. By this, the lambda values run through the CLS-1 first before they are sent to the car's ECU. The operational voltage needed will automatically be supplied by the new socket connection. Therefore, an extra power cable does not need to be installed. After connecting the sockets, use the cable straps provided to mount the CLS-1 to a suitable spot, like for example the car's wiring harness. Then the side covers just need to be returned and the installation is complete.
When the CLS-1 is activated, the control LEDs will start blinking from top to bottom and subsequently display the corresponding conditions. Software Installation Now it's time to install the software. Please execute the file setup and follow the instructions. Now the Bluetooth unit of the CLS-1 has to be selected. Start the car to activate the CLS-1 and then click this button. A selection window opens. In case you can't find the CLS-1, click on Search Again. Then select it and confirm by pressing OK. After the connection process was successful, you will see a now blinking LED and information on the Bluetooth module on top. To prepare the CLS-1 for the test drive, it needs to be bridged. Click on this button to do that. The status in the lower status bar changes from mixing input with set point to linking input to output. Starting now, all incoming values will be sent unaltered to the ECUs. The CLS-1 contains a memory function to record Lambda signals. You can display and download this data with the CLS Control Studio. Please make use of this function in order to record Lambda signals before changing the exhaust system. Conduct the test drive, record the data, and save them. This is a convenient way to read out the data later on. The functions in detail will be explained later. Now start the recording and drive the following speeds at a constant level, 90 km per hour, 130 km per hour, and full throttle. The whole pattern with these three speeds has to be accomplished in 1 minute 40 seconds because of memory limits. In case the maximum recording time is insufficient or you prefer to not use the recording function, you may alternatively enter the values into the text fields shown above. On the lower status bar, you see the leftover recording time. Once the memory is fully written, the recording stops automatically and a pop-up window appears. Switch over to the tab CLS Recordings Enter the car data and press the download button. Save the file. Before mounting the new exhaust system, you should check the recording. If the recording was corrupted in a way, it would still be possible to repeat the measurement. The image below shows a recorded lambda curve with explicit horizontal straights. These straights represent the values of the according velocities. The next step is to mount the Capristo exhaust system. After doing this, the CLS-1 can be adjusted with new values. Determine the values of the three speeds and enter them into the upper text fields on the tab CLS Numeric. Choose a value for limit high, for example, 0.8, and press the calculation button. The settings are changed instantly. The first adjustment can now be sent to the CLS-1. 
To do that, press the button Activate Settings. Please note, in order to activate alternated settings, you have to send them to the CLS1 by this button each time. Probably the CLS1 is still in bridged mode. If so, please switch it back to mixing mode. Now the CLS1 is active again. Make a test run and spectate the ECU. It is not unlikely that you still get error messages. During this phase, you should adjust the limit high primarily. This value represents the threshold from where the ECU no longer gets a simulated signal, but the primary input signal. Before getting to the software in detail, we are going to see the connection between exhaust values, lambda voltages, and error messages of the ECU. Red colors represent high exhaust values and high voltages, while green colors represent the lower ones. The gases are running through a standard converter, and the lambda sensor puts out a value of 0.6 volts. The ECU keeps silent and everything operates just normal. If the standard converter is exchanged by a racing converter, the cleaning capability decreases and the exhaust value increases. Thus, the voltage of the lambda sensor rises to, let's say, 0.8 volts. In case the upper threshold of the ECU is about 0.7 volts, the ECU now indicates an error and puts out a message. Now, if we insert the CLS between sensor and ECU, we're able to correct the faulty sensor voltages. Despite the too high exhaust values, we are now able to correct the voltages from the faulty 0.8 volts to the correct 0.6 volts. Furthermore, some ECUs do check the situations with a very low exhaust value, for example at zero speed, and on the other end, the very high exhaust values, for example at full throttle. The CLS1 detects those situations and routes the voltages accordingly to the output. In this way, the ECU always gets the expected values. In order to meet those requirements, we have defined the following three areas. 1. The area for high exhaust values and high voltages. 2. The middle area in which simulated voltages are used. And 3. The lower portion for the extreme low values. The lower threshold is fixed to 0.3 volts, and the upper threshold is, by the value, limit high, adjustable from 0.5 to 0.9 volts. Let's see that procedure live while the sensor voltage increases slowly. The sensor voltage is below 0.3 volts. The CLS routes the input voltage directly to the ECU. If the voltage of the lambda sensor rises above 0.3 volts, the CLS switches to simulating mode and puts out the offset, in this case, 0.61 volts. If the input voltage reaches the upper threshold, the CLS stops simulating and again routes the input voltage directly to the ECU. The maximum output voltage heading to the ECU never exceeds the value limit max, in this case actually 0.95 volts. Let's say the voltage of the old exhaust system was in the green area, while the voltage of the new system rises into the red area. Let's further assume the ECU gives an error message when the red area is reached. Now, when activated, the CLS instantly starts to give out a simulated voltage instead of the incorrect high input voltage. All of these sliders can be adjusted between their limits. The other two sliders are the main value in gray and the maximum output voltage in orange. All three can be found on the numeric tab too. Limit max the maximum output voltage connected with the orange slider. Limit high is connected to the blue slider. Amplitude is without function at this time. Furthermore, the area's general settings and presets. The value limit low is fixed. The value filtering smooths out square portions of the input signal. Offset is the main value of the simulated output voltage. The standard value is 0.61 volt. Furthermore, there's the value correction. 
Correction determines the percentage of the input signal which is mixed with the simulated signal going to the output. Reset to default resets the software to default values, and there is a button for a firmware update. The setting for Bluetooth radio switches off the Bluetooth receiver after the given time in minutes. On the left side, there's a checkbox for setting all sliders to grouped mode. Unchecking that box gives you the ability to adjust all values independent from each other. Let's take a look at the functions under Recordings. We already know the first button. It is for downloading recorded data from the CLS1. Once the download process is started, you can see the progress in the status bar below. This button is for uploading data to the CLS1. This button erases the CLS1 memory and writes standard values to it. Here you can load a recording from hard disk or USB stick. The button Play plays a recording. We also already know this Record Signals button. It starts a recording with the maximum duration of 100 seconds. The lower status bar shows the progress. Once the maximum recording time is reached, a message window appears and the recording process stops. The area on the right activates or deactivates each of the four histograms. Below that is a button to reset the display.